Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnston. Welcome to lecture 19 of Introductory Linear Algebra. In today's video, we're going to start learning how to actually solve systems of linear equations. Okay, so in today's class, we're going to sort of just go through some examples and get the gist of how it works, and then we'll pin down the details over the next two uh, lecture videos after this one. Okay, so to start off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to notice that linear systems they're really, really easy to solve if they have a certain special form, if they're sort of triangular in a sense, okay? So take this example over here, okay? If your linear system has this form where, you know, the coefficients of some of the variables are zero in this sort of lower triangular piece, then you can solve it very, very easily. You can solve it via a method called back substitution. What you do is you just start off with the easiest equation, this one at the bottom, and you solve, for, uh, solve that for one of the variables. And then you plug that into the earlier equations and then you solve them just one at a time. You know, one equation gives you one value of a variable and you plug that in and then the next equation gives you another value of a variable and so on down the line. And so let's see how it works for this particular system of linear equations. Starting off, looking at the bottom equation here, if 3z equals 6, well then we could just divide both sides by 3 to see that z must equal 2. Okay, and that's good because once we know that z equals 2, we can plug that back into the two earlier equations and now reduce the number of variables in the linear system by 1. Okay, so when I do that, when I plug into the top equation, I'm just going to get x plus 3y and then, well, minus 4 equals 5. So when I move that minus 4 over to the other side, I get a 9 on the right-hand side. And similarly, in the second equation here, I'm going to get 2y minus 12 because that is 2 equals 4, and when I move that minus 12 over to the other side, I get a 16. Okay, so this is my new linear system after I make the substitution z equals 2. And this linear system only has two variables, x and y. And again, this one has sort of that triangular form. One of the equations only has one variable in it. So I can solve it really easily, right? 2y equals 16, just divide both sides by 2, and I get y equals 8. Okay, so now I've got another one of my variables. Now I know z equals 2 and y equals 8. And now I can substitute back up again, okay? Now I can plug y equals 8 into this 3y here. I'm going to get x plus 24 equals 9. And when I move that plus 24 over to the other side, what I'm going to get is x equals minus 15, okay? x plus 3y equals, my, equals 9. You move the 3y over to the other side, and you're going to get minus 15. Okay, and then I know everything. Now I know all three of my variables. I know x equals minus 15, y equals 8, z equals 2. So that's the unique solution of that linear system. Okay, and that method that we just went through, that's called back substitution, and it works when your linear system has this triangular form. Okay, and we're going to pin down exactly what we mean by triangular form in the next lecture, but for now, just try to, I don't know, follow along with some examples just to get a feel for how this works. All right, so hopefully it seems at least somewhat believable that if your linear system has this triangular form, we know how to solve it, okay? We can use this back substitution procedure. Okay, well, what if we could sort of transform every, every linear system into that triangular form? What if we could sort of make that happen? We start off with an ugly linear system that has x's and y's and z's and maybe more variables all over the place, and we sort of do natural operations that don't change what the solutions are, but bring that linear system into the easy-to-solve triangular form. Well, the way that we could do that is, well, again, just using this 3x3 three three example, you know, if we have three variables and three, three equations, then what we could do is we could start off by eliminating x from equations 2 and 3, okay? The idea here is, like, if we want to have this sort of triangular form here, then we don't want any x terms in equation 2 and 3. Okay, and that's something that we can force to happen. We'll see how in the next example. We'll see how we can make that happen. And then the thing, once we've gotten zeros here, once we've eliminated x from the second and third equation, we're going to also be able to eliminate y from the third equation. Okay, and then we'll have the triangular form that we want. So that's going to be our approach here. First, we want to eliminate x from as many equations as possible. And then we want to eliminate y from as many equations as possible. And then we'll have this triangular form where we can do back substitution. So then we'll know how to solve it. All right, so let's go through an example here. Let's see how this actually works, okay? Let's start off with some linear system here. I'm going to give numbers to label the equations here, just make it a little bit easier to work with. This top equation is equation 1, then equation 2, then equation 3, okay? And the first thing that I'm going to do, like I said, I want to eliminate x from equations 2 and 3. So I want to get rid of the 3x and the 2x that I see over there, okay? And one way that I can do that is I can just add a carefully chosen multiple of the top equation 
to the other two equations, right? If I just take the second equation and subtract three times equation one from it, then what's gonna happen is the three x here will cancel with the minus three x from minus three times equation one, and I'll get a zero there, right? And that's what I've sort of written here. When I write this two minus three one over here, that means equation two minus triple equation one. And what happens is I get a zero x here. Three x minus three x is zero x. Okay, but I also have to update the rest of the equation, okay? So I had five y, but then minus three times this top equation, so I'm gonna get a minus nine y, so 5y minus 9y, oh, that's minus 4y. Here I have 6z, careful of your double negative. This is gonna be minus three times minus two z, so it's gonna be plus another 6z, and that'll give me 12z. And similarly on the right-hand side, I have seven minus 15, it's gonna be minus eight. Okay, so this is my new second equation in my linear system. Okay, and then I do something similar for equation three. I wanna get rid of the two x here because I wanna make the linear system more triangular. Okay, so I have two x here. I wanna subtract double equation one. Okay, because what that's gonna do is I'm gonna have two x minus two x, I'll get zero x's left overall, which is what I want. Okay, but then I have to update the rest of the equation as well. Okay, I'm gonna have four y minus two times three y. So four y minus six y is gonna be minus two y. Three z plus four z, again, be careful of your double negative, gives me seven z and eight minus 10 gives me minus two. So this is the new system of equations that I get after I do these two operations here, after I do these two ways of combining equations together. Okay, and this is good because now I'm a little bit closer to, to, to triangular, but I'm not quite there yet. I also wanna zero the here. I wanna get rid of this minus two y term. Okay, and I mean, I can do that sort of directly, like I could maybe add one half of equation two to equation three, but to make my life a little bit easier, before I do that, I'm gonna rescale this second equation, right? I see that every coefficient in the second equation is a multiple of four, so I'm just gonna rescale that so that, you know, get rid of that four, all right? So what I'm doing is I'm taking uh, that second equation and I'm multiplying it by minus a quarter. Certainly that won't change the solution set. It just makes that second equation a little bit prettier. You don't actually have to do this step here. I just like to do it. It's gonna make my further calculations a little bit easier just so that I don't have to take a, take a row and add a fraction of it to another row, okay? I'm sort of doing the fraction now just as a multiple. All right, so all I did was I multiplied it through by minus a quarter there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a multiple of this second row here to the third row to get rid of the y's here, okay? So I'm just gonna take uh, two copies of row two and add it to row three. Okay, and when I do that, when I do that, right, rows one and three are not, uh, sorry, rows one and two are not gonna change. So I just copy them down. But then row three, what happens to it? Apologize that this doesn't all fit on one page. What's gonna happen here is the minus two y cancels with plus two y from up here, and then seven z uh, gets minus six z. So altogether it's just one z now. And then minus two plus four is gonna become a plus two. Okay, so that's where this new equation comes from. It's just I took my old equation three and I added double equation two to it. Okay, and then the point is now this linear system here, it has that triangular form that we talked about before. There are no x's in these two equations and no y's in that equation down there. So we can just solve it via back substitution. Okay, so this linear system, it's upper triangular. We can solve it via back substitution. So what we do is we start at the bottom, okay? Bottom equation tells me, great, z equals two. I get one of my variables for free. Then I plug that into the second equation. I'm gonna get y minus six now because z is two. So y minus six equals two. I just rearrange that and solve for y. I get y equals eight, right? Move the minus six over to the other side. Okay, and then you go back to equation one. Okay, I've got x plus three y. Well, I know y is eight. So this is x plus 24 and then minus two z. Well, z is two, so that's minus four and equals five. Okay, so now I've just got a linear equation in x. That's the only variable there. I just move everything over to the right-hand side and I find that x equals minus 15 when I move the 24 and minus four over there. Okay, and now I've got my whole solution. I know what x and y and z are. x, y, and z are minus 15, eight, and two. So that's the unique solution of that linear system. Okay, so now I wanna go back through this exact same example and show how to solve it in a slightly more efficient way by making use of matrices. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the same linear system but throw it into a matrix before I solve it. Okay, so the way that we do this is we just take the coefficients on the left-hand side, throw it into a matrix. 
okay? But then I throw the right-hand side coefficients into the same matrix. I'm just thinking of it sort of as a block matrix where the left block comes from the left-hand side of the linear system and the right block comes from the right-hand side of the linear system. Okay, so this is very similar to how we threw linear systems into matrices and, and column vectors in the previous lecture video, right? I mean, so all I'm doing is I'm taking this linear system AX equals B and I'm just sort of consolidating it all into one matrix, the block matrix, A on the left-hand side, A in the left block, and then the column vector B in the right block, okay? And then the way that I solve my linear system when I represent it in this way, when I represent it as a matrix, is I just do exactly what I did over here on the left with equations, except I do those operations to rows of the matrix in, instead, okay? And this just saves me the, the hassle of having to write down the variables every single time. They're just sort of implied by this augmented matrix form. Okay, so for example, the first thing that I would do is, well here, equation two minus triple equation one, that just corresponds to row two minus three row one, okay? When I write R2 here, that means row two. R1, that means row one. R3, that means row three. Okay, so what I'm doing here is these are called row operations. I'm taking the second row and I'm subtracting triple the first row from it, okay? So, you know, here I had three and I'm subtracting three from it, so I get a zero. I have five, minus nine gives me minus four. 6 plus 6 gives me 12, careful of your double negative. 7 minus 15 gives me minus 8. So that gives me my new second row. And I do a similar thing in the third row. Okay, and if you just sort of compare the left-hand side here to the right-hand side, you'll notice that all the coefficients are the same. We're doing the exact same calculation, we're just not writing down the variable names as we do it, okay? The x's and y's and z's are sort of suppressed, so it's a little bit quicker to write down. It makes our life a little bit easier, and also it's going to make it easier to sort of analyze these uh, linear systems and prove things about the solution method later on when we come to the next two last lectures. Okay, and then similarly, this uh, this uh, next step, when we multiplied row two by minus a quarter, we just write that as minus a quarter times R2 times row two. Okay, and then the second row turns into one minus three, two. Okay, and similarly, for the last step, uh, where we did row three plus double row two, well, in matrix notation, we just write that as R3 plus two R2. Okay, and then the matrix that we get looks like this, okay? And this matrix, here you can see that upper triangular form that we want, okay? We have zeros in the lower triangular portion, zeros below the diagonal, and that's the form that we want. We'll talk a bit, bit more precisely about that next lecture, but that's basically what we want, and that's the form that we can do back substitution from. Okay, now, the nice thing about this method of solving linear systems is there are only ever three types of row operations that you need to do to solve the linear system, okay? One thing that we did, and this is sort of the most common type of row operation, is we added a multiple of a row to a different row, okay? And this is because we wanted to use this operation to sort of zero out particular entries in the matrix or to get rid of variables in the linear system, right? Um, so we do things like row two minus three row one very often. For example, if we start off with this matrix, that's probably what we would do because we want a zero down in this left bottom left entry. We want to make the matrix more upper triangular. Okay, so we would do row two minus three times row one. We would get a zero down here and other junk in those two entries. Okay, that's something that we call an elementary row operation. And there are two other types of elementary row operations. One of them we've seen already. Okay, one of them is just multiplying a row by a non-zero constant, okay? Multiplying it by a non-zero scalar. Okay, so we saw this when we multiplied the second row by minus a quarter earlier, but you can multiply it by any non-zero scalar. That's okay, that's still an elementary row operation. So for example, if we had this linear system over here, then maybe what we would want to do is we would multiply, want to multiply the top row by a half, just to turn this two here into a one to make it a little bit easier, or to get rid of sort of the common factor in this first row. Okay, if we did that, then everything in the top row just gets multiplied by a half, and that's what that elementary row operation does. And you're allowed to do this when solving linear systems. And then the final thing that you're allowed to do is you're allowed to interchange two rows. You're allowed to swap their positions. Okay, and the reason you're allowed to do this is, again, remember what it corresponds to with a linear system. Okay, if you swap two rows, that just corresponds to swapping the order of equations. And of course, that doesn't actually change the linear system. It just changes how you're writing down the linear system. It's not gonna change your solutions. Okay, so yeah, it's fine to swap two rows in a linear system or, you know, in matrices that represent a linear system as well, okay? And as an example of why you might want to do this, consider this example here. If you have this linear system, okay, well, we want sort of an upper triangular form, but I can't, uh, I can't subtract any multiple of row one from row two to get a zero down here in the bottom left corner, right? Because it's always going to be one minus or plus a multiple of zero. So it's just always going to be one. 
So the way to get around this is instead just swap the order of the rows. Just swap those two rows there. Now your top row is what used to be the bottom row and your bottom row is what used to be the top row. And hey, now we've got that zero down there that we wanted. Now our linear system is more triangular. Okay, so that's another row operation that we wanna do sometimes. And that's another one that's okay to do. All right, so that's enough for today. Hopefully that gives sort of the gist of the types of things that we'll be doing to solve a linear system. What we're gonna do in the next video is we're gonna pin down this idea of what it means for a linear system or a matrix to be upper triangular. So it has sort of this tri triangular form that we can do back substitution from. And then once we know that, we'll sort of combine things and we'll sort of pin down exactly how you solve linear systems. All right, so I'll see you then for those next two videos.